This is a recording of this year's virtual residency fair. We'd like to take the time to thank the programs that volunteered their time to present to this year's applicants. This year's PMNR Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by PMNR Recap and Ultrasound Guidance. PMNR Recap is the leading resource for your physiatry board preparation, clinical preparation, audition rotations, and beyond. PMNR Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and oral board cases to help you become the best physiatrist that you can be. Head to PMNRRecap.com to learn more. Ultrasound Guidance is the innovative new on online ultrasound learning platform that gives you instant access to expert instruction. With rapid scans and complete scans of every joint and peripheral nerve, Ultrasound Guidance is the perfect way to jumpstart your MSK ultrasound learning. Visit ultrasoundguidance.com to learn more. All right, cool. Hello. Um, welcome. Thank you for having us, being our scholars. Um, thank you guys all for being here. Um, just make sure this is out of the way. I am Chris Bell, I'm one of the PGY4s, one of our three chief residents here at Kessler. And I am uh, very fortunately joined by a few of my co-residents who I will let introduce themselves right now. Hey guys, hope you can hear me. I'm Nova. I'm one of the PGY4s. I'll be applying into PEDS, hopefully eventually doing PEDS sports in the long term. Um, I'm originally from Houston, didn't do an OA at Rutgers, but really love the program and obviously matched here. We also have Lena and Rachel, who two of our PGY2s who agreed. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know who to, who to unmute first. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Lena. I'm one of the PGY2s um, at Kessler. I went to NJMS for medical school and so that was kind of my intro into PM&R and, and into how awesome Kessler was. So um, I'm happy to be here today. Yes, I'm also a PGY2. Um, my name is Rachel um, and like Lena, I also was a graduate from uh, Rutgers NJMS for medical school um, and thrilled to be back at Kessler and thrilled to be joining you all today. I very much remember this event uh, two years ago. So hang in there and uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, and just for completion, my interests are in neuro rehab, both spinal cord uh, injury and traumatic brain injury. Okay, so this is just a cute little picture of our, our class and of our faculty. So you can see our leadership in the top left corner. Um, we also have uh, two spinal cord injury fellows um, a TBI fellow and a PEDS rehab fellow. And then you can see our classes, of our three classes. So um, it's a total of 25 ACGME positions. And so depending on the year, it's going to be either eight or nine residents per class. In terms of rotation sites, um, that's actually one of our strengths. Um, so Kessler Institute for Rehabilitation, that's one of our um, most well-known standalone rehab facilities. It's where you do the majority of your inpatient spinal cord injury, inpatient brain injury, inpatient amputee and cardiac rehab, as well as your general like ortho, whatever general debility. Um, this is where we get most of our 24 hour calls. This is where we really learn and spend a lot of your time in your earlier junior years of residency and you become the great team our resident that you are. Um, another main primary training site for our outpatient side is the East Orange VA Medical Center. Um, this is where we have really, really great musculoskeletal attendings, and this is also where we, one of our um, heavily EMG training sites, and the attendings there are super great at the VA. I think maybe across the country, things are a little bit slower, but you really get to spend as long as you want with the, with the patients, you have access to MRI imaging, to ultrasound. Um, obviously EMG, this is like a really, really great learning environment and our attendings there are so, so, so nice. Um, our major underserved um, facility is the Newark University Hospital. This is a level one trauma center. This is where we get all of our gunshot wounds, our stab wounds. We have a lot of patients who are underinsured, under, under, um, undocumented. Um, this is where we kind of see a little bit more of that like resource limited setting. Um, people who are just super, super grateful. And we do a consultation service here as well as outpatient clinics here. Um, some of the outpatient attendings we have are more sports focused or sports and spine. So they do pain management, MSK, they do injections in the pain suites. And then we also have like TBI and spasticity management on the outpatient side. Um, but one of our like amazing attendings that I'm currently working with is Dr. Youngquist and you do consults for the whole hospital. Really, really incredible senior learning experience. 
And then a really strong point of our programs also that we have a standalone acute inpatient rehab facility as well called Children's Specialized Hospital. There's also an affiliated LTAC in Mountainside. So you kind of have acute inpatient rehab on the adult side as well as the PEDS side, as well as outpatient, inpatient, outpatient on both adult and PEDS and kind of like an LTAC or like a subacute rehab setting on the pediatric side. They have like pools, they have amazing therapists. It's just like children's hospitals are just more beautiful in general. It's a great time rotating there. And we also do a ton of ultrasound and guided Botox and phenol. And you get to do that as a resident one-on-one -on -one with an attending. Um, lastly, we have St. Barnabas Medical Center, which is one of our newly acquired sites. We also have an, a robust outpatient sports spine and MSK clinic. We work very closely with the sports orthopedics at St. Barnabas, and we're starting to do a few consultations on the burn service there, as well as some of their inpatients. So I think another strength of our program is our educational opportunities. So we have didactics once a week, um, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., usually on Wednesdays. Um, and that's completely protected time. You're not supposed to have, like, be responsible for any clinical duties at that time. Um, not supposed to be answering pages or anything like that. The attendants will take care of that. They're really good about that. Um, so I think also you, if I'm not mistaken, we also see the same material uh, more than once. So you kind of get to solidify that, uh, whatever you learn in the first time around, um, once you see it again. We also have um, grand rounds. So that's coordinated by PGY3 residents, which is a really good way for them to build connections with other faculty in the field. And that happens monthly. Um, then we have journal clubs. We have different types of journal club and depending on which one it is, it's either monthly or quarterly. Um, and so we have really good faculty support and, and, and education during those journal clubs as well. Then we have some workshops and, and different types of courses. So those are built in the, into the curriculum. Sometimes they happen before didactics and sometimes even outside of that. Uh, faculty is very, very supportive of that as well. Um, and it gives us opportunities to teach too. Um, and then another thing that's very unique about our program is that the NJMS students have a mandatory fourth year rotation. So we get a lot of really interested med students around. Um, it gives us an opportunity to teach them um, informally and more formally as well. Um, and then we also te help them with the physical exam, like the MSK phys physical exam as well. Um, so research and quality improvement are a big part of our residency program. Um, one of the graduation requirements is for all the residents to complete a longitudinal graduation research project. And so this can be either something that you come up with as a resident or you're a project that you end up jumping up, um, jumping in on. And um, we do presentations at the end of each year to kind of tell everybody how our progress is with our projects. Um, we benefit from being a, our Kessler is a model systems hospital, meaning that uh, we get a grant and basically we saying that we provide exceptional care for spinal cord injury and traumatic brain injury. We have access to um, a national database that you can draw from for your research. Kessler Foundation, um, this is a huge research foundation with tons of amazing people working on really um, like new research. And they're a big resource for us because they help us with our statistics and help brainstorm ideas for projects. It's a really awesome having them there. And then there is this group QAQI project. Um, it was recently like an 18 month cycle where I think we're kind of adjusting it now to like a tw maybe every 12 month cycle, but basically, um, you know, every single hospital setting that you're in, there is things that can be adjusted and improved on. And so residents come up with ideas of how could things be better in our hospital. And so we go through this whole, um, you know, PDSA cycle. So now moving on to what I think at least is the biggest highlight of our program. And that of course is the people. Um, I think especially Lena and I can speak to the fact that we, you know, we're there for medical school and loved it so much, couldn't, couldn't bear to leave. Um, so uh, this is just, again, a whole collection of photos of um, us hanging out either at Kessler or out in the community. Um, while we are a group of 25 residents, uh, does feel very small and very much like a family. Our weekly uh, didactic sessions um, are a chance that 
we get to kind of all get together and see one another despite being at different rotations across uh, the many different sites that Nova talked about. Um, and just this past Wednesday, we got out a little early and everyone's first reaction was, all right, where's the whole group going to lunch? And we rolled in, you know, 30 people deep uh, to the place around the corner. Um, so again, I think it really just speaks to the fact that we do genuinely enjoy spending time with each other. And even more than that, as a kind of colleagues to have your back, um, as a new PGY2, they're is truly no senior resident that I have any issue approaching with any question, no matter how small from something on Epic to something much larger about being on call. They are accessible, especially through our first calls 24 seven. Um, it's really just been a remarkable support system and I can't kind of speak enough about uh, really what I truly see as the best highlight of our program. Um, and the second best probably would be our attendings continuing with the people. Um, so kind of there in the top right corner is our chief medical officer hanging out in the resident lounge, because why not? And right next to that, the chair of the PM&R department, um, you know, kind of doing funny hieroglyphics also in the resident lounge. Um, we rotate one-on-one -on -one with the attendings who are just as approachable as the other residents and um, really just kind of make the day kind of fly by and a really joyous atmosphere to work in. Um, it's really about kind of letting the work be stressful and not the work environment. Um, and I credit them all for that. It's really an impressive group of people. Um, and once again, a lot of our attendings um, are also uh, previous residents of this program. So again, just kind of further highlighting um, once you come to Kessler, you may not want to leave. <laughs> and yes, they look good in funny hats, yes. Uh, here's just a snapshot of kind of where our residents have gone after graduation. Um, as you can see, a whole host of very impressive uh, fellowship opportunities, uh, as well as many every year going into private practice. Um, again, I think this speaks very highly of the breadth of experience you receive as a Kessler res or an NJMS resident um, that you can, upon graduation, feel comfortable in your skills to go on directly into practice um, or pursue a fellowship across really any area of PM&R. Um, while we are a model system center, as Chris said, in both spinal cord injury and traumatic brain injury, uh, every year we have um, residents match into the top sports and spine programs in the country. Um, there's uh, prosthetics, orthotics, uh, peds, pain management, um, really the whole host of, of what PM&R has to offer, which again, I think just speaks to the, the breadth of exposure you get uh, during your residency years. And that's us in a nutshell. So we will take questions. Anyone has any questions on living in the gorgeous Northern New Jersey? I'm a born and bred resident. Um, and those are the, the chief contact info there. So please don't hesitate to reach out. And follow us on Instagram. I'm the social media manager for the second year in a row. It means a lot to me. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna take one of the questions in the chat. What are some of the Rutgers or Kessler wellness events? Um, so one of our residents decided to start a humanism and medicine group. So we've been able to go out to dinner with a bunch of residents and we're hoping to add some attendings that we kind of focus on humanism and just checking with our feelings. That's like one of our wellness events. Chris helped organize last year um, water rafting in the Delaware Water Gap. We've gone on hiking trips. We do top golf, we go and eat, um, just general picnics. It, there's a little bit of everything, but like I personally am really interested in like adaptive sports and like sports events. So like we do adaptive surfing. I was at a the beach two times this summer already working with that. Some of the residents and med students were able to come, um, but we have other events, um, both medical related and non-medical related that all help with wellness. Oh man, questions and coming coming in hot. Let's see. <laughs> um, do you have any advice about how to stand out during your two week acting internship? Um, so I think this was touched on by by some of the uh, the previous presenters. So I'm trying to think if there's like anything anything new I have to add to what they had to say already. Um, obviously, be enthusiastic um, and engaged. But um, I think I mean you know it's hard like. It's hard to give you like a Kessler unique answer, but basically I think as a field in PM&R, you're always gonna be working in a team with other people, you know, not just doctors, but nurses, therapists, case managers. Um, 
other staff. And so I think we just look for people who are very team oriented, who are personable, willing to add, you know, work with others. Um, I would say looking around at my co-residents, everybody is very collaborative and, and easy to talk to, approachable. And so just demonstrating those characteristics really goes a long way. Um, and uh, anything to add, guys? And also just um, advice, ask a lot of questions. Um, I really, you know, pick the brains of the attendings you're working with and the senior residents or even junior ones uh, for as much as we know at this point um, with any kind of burning questions, not just about the, you know, process, but about their field, about what interests them or motivated them to go into the different areas of PM&R. Um, I think that, you know, really kind of taking advantage of, of having that one-on-one -on -one time with those um, mentors and teachers, I think is um, a really good way to not only stand out, but to also learn a lot. I came up with something. All right. So I think, you know, it's, there's obviously the baseline stuff where, you know, be helpful, write notes, things like that. But I think also bringing in your own personal talents and, and things that you may not normally think that you would be useful on a rotation but like, I'll, let me give you an example. So one of one of my co residents, Kevin, he's he really enjoys OMM. Um, he's a DO, and he on, you know, right now as a resident, he gets to do a lot of OMT. But I think, you know, we are very open minded people. So like things like, if you have certain things from your personal life or personal medical experience that you want to bring into your rotation experience, I think the residents and attendings are very willing to let you kind of do what you want with um to benefit patients and so just that, in that specific example like you wanted to do omt on somebody who in rehab who's having a lot of you know pain um that would be cool you know so don't be afraid to bring those things into your rotation experience um next question how is the call schedule broken down nova nova you want to take this one um, so call will get progressively better each PGY year as a PGY two is when you do the most of your inpatient 24 hour calls, you get a post call day, but I think it ends up being at most twice a week. Usually it's, it'll average to about, I think like six calls every two months, maybe a little bit more than that, depending on how many people are in the call pool. Um, but as a PGY three, you end up being on call, like maybe at most once a week, probably more like three times a month or so. And as a PGY, sorry, I'm doing this backwards. As R1, R2, R3, as R3, or PGY4, you have zero weekend calls and you're on call about three times every block, which is two months. So it progressively gets much better um, and you do more front loaded, but the calls, honestly, they are challenging, but as some of our, uh, my juniors have mentioned, you have a lot of support. There's always an attending there for you to back up. And I think that we train you and prepare you really well to do, to succeed at call. Okay, next question. What are the opportunities for resident faculty mentorship like? Um, so I think, I mean, there's a, there's a lot. I think it's something that um, you may not it may not necessarily kind of present itself to you unless like without you asking. But I think definitely like our attendings are very open to sharing their experiences with you and helping you can kind of provide career guidance. I think that happens like you know, you, like like Nova had mentioned on a lot of our rotations, you're working one on one with with your attending. And so, and our rotations are two months long. So you're really getting to know your attending very well. Um, and so during that time, you can, especially if they're in a field that you are considering for the future, very happy to offer you advice. Um, our, we fortunately have a very large like alumni network. And as we said, people go into all sorts of different fields. And so um, those people are, all, are also available to, uh, to reach out to and provide their advice and guidance. I'm just gonna take another question. I think Gary asked if there are research mentors available. So because research project is required for us during residency, um, most of the residents reach out to their attendings in a field that they're interested in to as a mentor, but there are actually Kessler Foundation people available who are like PhDs and also help you with your research. So like I'm working with Dr. Chang, one of the P's attendings, but 
he personally connected me to like Guy Thindrow, the PhD at the foundation. And now he got me through my IRB project, like from literally literature view to like en enrolling patients um, as a prospect of controlled stat trial. So like whether you're just doing chart review or you're doing a full on IRB project, there are tons of research vendors because it's a requirement for a residency program. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Um, I think that's about time. If you guys don't mind, I think, I don't know if you guys already dropped your contact info in the chat box. If you guys feel comfortable dropping it in there, that way folks can reach out to you guys if there's any other questions. And I know it's already on the slide as well. Um, thank you guys again.